So, you're working on your comic and everything's going fine and dandy when out of nowhere you just run out of ideas. Like nothing, nothing going on in your noggin. So, what do you do? You probably go and uh, murder your husband for whistling during a uh, voiceover. That's what you do. Just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> But what do you actually do when you're out of ideas for your story? Do you cry? Pray to a higher power to bestow inspiration? Or just give up? The answer is no, you silly billies. Don't give up. Don't cry and... Well, I mean, you could pray to a higher power to bestow inspiration. But if these answers seem vague and you're still lost on what you want to do or what you should do, uh, here's a couple of tips that could help you potentially get in the right direction. And these are not in any sort of order <laughs> whatsoever. I just kind of wrote these out as, as uh, bullet points. But um, the first suggestion I have is to write fan fiction. And if you're if you're not new to the channel, you've probably heard me say this like pretty much in every video that I've made so far. But yeah, fan fiction is great because you can. Put your characters in your favorite shows, games, comics, novels, anything. You just throw them into a completely different genre than what your current comic is. Or your story. I guess it could go for stories as well. This is mostly for webcomic creators, but you know, if you're listening to this and you're writing a story or you know, doing something in a different format, then uh, that's also great. So what does writing fanfiction about your characters do for you? Uh, it basically it frees up your mind to think about your characters and their story a little differently. So you might find a new angle to approach part of your story that you're stuck on, or maybe a character you thought you needed to be a certain way for your story can actually go in a totally different direction without harming the main plot points. And in some cases it might enhance your storytelling by giving that character more depth. It's also just fun to explore the what ifs of your characters and their relation to your story. What if instead of a beach town setting for Fairy Lantern, they were in like a medieval setting, but with the same storyline? What would be different there? Or you could even go with like, what if the roles were reversed? What if your main, like, <laughs> what if your main character was actually the side character and the side character in your story was the main character. What would be different? How would they tackle those same problems that your main character would normally have? And I don't know, there's just something really disarming about that, that you're able to, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, you're just able to think about it more freely, like you're not bound to all these little restraints that you mentally put on yourself for these like certain characters and their very specific story that you have for them. So I don't know, it's just, it's something that I've learned works for me. I don't actually write any fan fiction of my characters. I really should write some of these down because they're pretty entertaining. But uh, most of the time I just keep it in my head and I'll sit there and think about it for like a day while I'm doing other things around the house, taking care of my kids and stuff, so. But, um, yeah. And I'll use my own comic as, like, a case study for this, so, like, what if Fairy Lantern was actually a horror genre <laughs> instead of a romance comedy? Like, what would be different there? You know, or I had an idea for a funny like fan fiction idea the other day and it was basically what if my characters were in um, Kimetsu no Yaiba uh, Demon Slayer the anime um, and just thinking from the first season so nothing crazy or anything and I was just like who who would Tanjiro be? Tanjiro would be Regan. Regan would be Tanjiro in that situation and then Quill would be <laughs> Quill would be the sister locked in the box because she became a demon. So you know, when you when you start to take your characters and take them out of their natural habitat and put them into something new, it just kinda 
it just helps ideas flow better. I, I don't know how to really explain it other than like if you take your characters and just do it and to see what magic unfolds, I guess. So the short version of that is to just put your characters in a fan fiction setting of any kind really and just to see what changes happen, how they tackle things differently. Does their environment affect them? If they're in a new environment, does that change like the whole story? That kind of stuff and it just kind of it, it opens your mind to possibilities that when you're running out of ideas makes it all worth it. <laughs> so the next tip is to connect the dots. So when I was writing the early part of Fairy Lantern, like literally when Regan comes to the beach town and then decides to stay at the beach town, I had a hard time figuring out how to get her to actually stay. And so this next uh, bit of advice is for that. I wasn't sure which way to go with it, and so my advice here is to write one sentence summaries of what you want to happen from point A in the story to point B, and then start to kind of make small hops between the plot points to connect the dots. So in my example, Regan comes to the beach town is point A, and then Regan deciding that she wants to stay after seeing the, the hellhole that is her grandpa's house. I needed to write all those little points between those two to actually get to point B, which is her deciding to actually stay. And to do that, again, I just wrote um, some simple quick sentences to kind of list out what I needed to happen to get her to that point B. So literally the, <laughs> the, sentence, the sentences I have are Regan arrives at her grandparents' house. Regan has a full panic attack about the house. Regan runs into the neighbor. Regan calms down and gets settled in the house. Quill is introduced as a nameless character going unseen by Regan. Regan completes chores around the house. Regan visits the grandma's grave. Regan goes to the beach. Regan decides to stay in town after a long day after visiting grandma's grave and going to the beach. So that's basically the how I was able to get from point A to point B. I just wrote a whole bunch of small sentences of like things that I knew needed to happen. And then you kind of structure it even more after that in between those sentences. How does she do this sentence and that sentence and that sentence and I don't know does that make sense <laughs> I hope it does I had known vaguely how to get there but by making small hops and connecting the dots it helped me get out of that writing slump and also adding to the previous point thinking in the context of fan fiction of how your characters would get from point A to point B in your story if it was in a different different setting also helped so yeah, that tip might have been a little more on the boring side, but I definitely felt like it was one to add into this video because it was really helpful for me and that's something that I still continue to do a lot of. So my next tip would be to not run on empty. And by this I mean recharge by getting the input from the world around you. And as a creative, it's sometimes too easy to get sucked into the seemingly endless cycle of creating but it's also important to feed that creative creativity by experiencing the world around you. You can read a new book, watch a show, play a video game, explore a new town if you're able to, take up a new hobby, go out with friends or family. All of these things can help feed your creativity and refuel you, which might also be the spark that you need to... Ah, sorry, bug. <laughs> Which, that might also be the spark that you need to get your ideas flowing again. And speaking of refuel, eating a good meal, drinking water, and exercising has really gone a long way to help me recharge both physically and mentally. So I, I really can't list the number of times that I've sat here trying to come up with ideas and then realized I was just super thirsty, went and grabbed a water, drank the water, 
And then suddenly I'm like, oh, wow, I feel better. Oh, I got an idea. Like literally just like that. And it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild. You imagine taking care of your body actually helps you do things. Crazy. My next tip is that you got to catch them all. And I don't mean Pokemon, but if you want to, I guess that's great. <laughs> when you get a random bla brain blast, brain blast, brain blast, blast, when you get a random brain blast, be it in the shower, on the drive home from work, while you're washing dishes, or after waking up, a good tip is to try and write it down if you can. The classic, I'll remember if it's important enough, has failed me so many times. So now I try to write things down or type it out in my notes app on my phone. And if the idea immediately leaves me, I found that if I go back to the space that I had that thought, it kind of helps me start to remember it. And this doesn't mean that I have to take a second shower if I had an idea in the shower or, you know, have to drive my car <laughs> if I had an idea while I was driving. Um, it literally could just be like walking to the bathroom or standing in the shower, no water, to remember that, or just walking to the car. So just like something that like helps your brain just jog that memory a bit. It seems to help me, so. And then that way I can try and write it down and get it in a more permanent form. Next tip, find a muse. So bouncing ideas around with a trusted friend or family member is another just great way to actually get some ideas or even just get some ideas of things that you know you don't want to do for your story. <laughs> that also helps. And uh, bonus points if it's someone who doesn't mind getting spoilers for your story. So in my case, I usually badger my husband for a little bit of his time and I can usually explain what I'm stuck on and how I'm stumped. So if it's a point A to point B type situation where I just don't know how to get this character from this part of the story to the next part of the story, um, my husband's usually pretty helpful at throwing a bunch of ideas out there. And even if none of the ideas seem helpful, it's usually enough to kind of trigger my brain to come up with something to basically one up what he said. <laughs> I don't know. That might just be the competitive nature in me or something. I'm not sure. But if it works, it works. He might not be my muse, but I do find him amusing. <laughs> Next tip. Anime music video. So back in the early days of YouTube, you could find so many great anime music videos of your favorite characters from practically any show, anime, movie, anything, like you name it, fan-made videos would usually explore certain parts of their stories, relationships, and there was definitely a lot of angst. So much angst. So why is this a tip? Basically, listening to music with the mindset of making an AMV for your own characters and story is just a powerful tool for idea generation. So many of my own ideas for my comic came from listening to just the right song while thinking about just the right character. So it's pretty wild. So definitely give it a shot if you're listening to music next time. So case in point, like if you're listening to something I don't know, uh, like super angsty, like really sad music, and you have like a normally happy character, and you think about them while you're listening to this really, really sad song, and now suddenly you have like this tragic backstory for a character, and it's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't even know they had that backstory, and it just kind of popped up. Or, you know, like, you could do that, or, you know, if you're on more of like a romancy type, uh, story then you know just grab like your two characters that you have planned to have a romantic relationship sometime in your comic and then just like throw throw a whole bunch of songs that are more on the romantic side and you know see what pops up in your brain so it's kind of amazing like if you start thinking about stuff while you're listening to music it just kind of I don't know. For me, it just starts to like play out in my head. I don't know if I'm just weird like that or something. 
but uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I hope that idea will uh, help you guys out. So there you go. I hope this little video could help you guys when you're feeling stumped. And good luck on your comic making adventure and relax. It's all part of the process. Thanks for watching. And if you happen to read my webcomic Fairy Lantern and want to support my comic making comic making it, but I need to just stop reading the script now. Word from sponsor. I I am the sponsor of my own video. My comic is the sponsor of this video. Um, if you happen to read Fairy Com Family Comic, that <laughs> it's a classic example of artists not being able to promote themselves. Very good. Let me try that again. If you happen to read my webcomic Fairy Lantern and want to support my comic making adventure, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. For $3 a month, you get access to my full archive of ab studies, fluffy drawings of Regan and Quill, like the one you've been watching so far, and be behind, ah, be behind the scenes um, footage, not footage, behind the scenes process of my comic making process. I need to get better at writing these. Uh, all the while you having the eternal gratitude of this little lady right here. That's me. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, goodbye for real. <laughs>